Welcome everybody to join me on this live stream talking about the new EOS webcam utility tool that Canon just put out. Now it seemed that Canon had the idea of helping everyone out. Now, if you haven't been trying to live stream lately, but you've just been stuck home, well, there have been plenty others at home trying to figure out how to live stream. And that includes not only those that are just basically trying to get into this YouTube game and figure out something to do, but also celebrities and talk show hosts and TV shows, TV show hosts, basically everybody. And what that has caused is a surge and demand for not only webcams, but more expensive cameras that could hook up to your computer. But what if you have a DSLR or mirrorless camera of high quality? Wouldn't you want that for your live stream? Well, once they get the camera, they're like, okay, how do you plug it in to your computer? Well, then they figure out, we gotta find out a way to do this. And one item that has been selling out online that I've noticed is the Elgato webcam. That thing has been selling out and pretty much price gouged. Right now I'm actually using it to live stream. That's what I normally use. That's my setup that I've used for a while. But I bought it for about $70 when I bought it. And the time that I bought it, it was only the HD version. It was not the 4K version, but the HD version was fine for me. It goes up to 60 frames per second at 1080p. And that's all I output at when I do these YouTube live streams. So that works. And welcome everyone watching me right now. It's been a while since I've seen you guys live and I want to say you've been missed. Definitely. So moving on. But there are a lot of people who can't get that USB Elgato connection or any other connections because they're overpriced. So what do you do? Well, Canon figure out, hey, people have been paying for software to connect our cameras via USB. During these trying times, why not just give them a utility for free off of our cameras? And they just put out an EOS webcam utility beta version, which you see uh, this way right next to me. Um, this thing actually is meant to work with many, many Canon cameras. I'll scroll down here and welcome Daniel Shepard. Um, <laughs> nice to see you on. Thank you. So I'll scroll down here. Here you see the list of cameras that the software is supporting. And it actually works pretty well. I installed it on my um, laptop and on my desktop, which is what I'm using right now. And as you see me move in and as smooth as it looks right now, the USB connection actually looks pretty well as well when I used it, except it seemed to cap out at 1080p at 30 frames per second rather than 60 frames per second. But even that is not bad at all, at least for when it comes to one of these type of setups. So I'm like, great. This means that I can have a multiple camera setup because I only had one Elgato USB card to, to record directly from HDMI. So using two cameras would be absolutely amazing. That's something I wanted to go for. And I actually have a couple of Canon cameras. I have the 5D Mark IV and I have the 6D. 6D does not have clean HDMI out, but it definitely does have a USB connection. But if you look at this list that's right next to me, there is no original 6D. It shows the 6D Mark II, but it doesn't show the 6D. So I downloaded it and installed the 5D Mark IV version and tested it with the 5D Mark IV. And I was like, okay, let me, let me try the software with the Canon 6D. 6D Mark I, not Mark II. So this is going way back one. And it worked. To my surprise, it's not on the list, but the Canon 6D Mark I worked. Now there was a few caveats. One thing to keep in mind is that the 5D Mark IV has a USB 3.0 connection, and it's not USB-C, it's kind of the micro USB connection, but the thicker one. So it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's kind of like the thin one, but it's kind of a little wider than what's normally given. 
so it's thicker and it's a pretty high speed connection when you connect it to a USB A but 3.0 or 3.1 slot on your computer it can transmit a lot of data however the Canon 6D is the first um, it's like mini USB connection, which is kind of a, I don't have it here because I'm actually connected, but it's kind of like a square shape, almost like a square, but it's got like a shorter side and a longer side, but it's a little thicker. And that unfortunately caps out at USB 2.0 connection. So what that means is that data does not travel fast enough between the camera and the computer to give a smooth playback. However, it does work. You see, this software, as much as I understand it and was able to play around with it, this software acts like you have a webcam connected to your computer at all times. So when you turn on your camera, it will basically be the EOS DSLR uh, web utility app. And it'll that is the name of the camera. So when you're selecting something like zoom or you're doing some type of chat or if you're doing a stream you select the eos web utility as your camera and then boom you'll pop up here um but that doing so um is not compatible with all devices so i mean all programs so all programs can't function with it um when you try for example to use your camera function on your on your computer it won't respond. It won't, it won't show up like it's a camera that exists. Also, it's only compatible with Windows, not Mac. This is a beta, so betas are usually considered early releases, not yet the full functionality of the software, but now's the best time to use it, so why not use it? Um, so that's that. So I'm going to show you right now, because I've got the Canon 6D Mark one attached right now so i'm going to show you that angle you'll see the green screen behind me and and I'll, I'll look at that camera so here it is green screen behind me now you can tell that because of the lack of high speed because it's not high speed at all it is very jittery i actually um put the resolution down to 720p at 60 frames per second because I wanted to test it at its highest frame rate to see how much I can put through but at you know 60 frames per second and that's why I'm a little softer than I am from the other shot but it's it works and if I'm showing something that's a still like let's say I wanted to show you something on my desk or a product I'd have angle 2 with the Canon 6D focused on that product while the 5D Mark IV gets my full shot like you see here and then that would work fantastic daniel shepherd you're asking eight frames per second feels that way practically eight to 14 frames per second however that's because of the slow output of the the old usb if you're using one of the highlighted cameras which you see here you'll get closer to 30 frames per second Maybe if your connection is not solid enough, you might notice a couple of jitters. Um, but with a clean, full USB 3.0 slot on your computer coming out of your camera or USB-C connection, if you've got a more modern camera, you'll get an excellent frame rate. You'll get an excellent look and it'll work for you. And what's amazing is that the Canon 60 itself does not have clean HDMI out, but because of this, I get somewhat of a clean HDMI, despite the fact that it's this reduced frame rate, right? And don't take just this um, situation as the pure definition of how it will look, because that's how it looks when I'm using it on my laptop. However, when I used it, I mean, that's how it looks when I'm using it on my desktop, excuse me. When I used it on my laptop, I got closer to 30 frames per second on the 60. So it's not uniform. And I connecting it now and back then off of a 3.0 connection. So it's kind of here or there. You're 
your uh, results may vary. Let's just say that. And your results may vary off of the 5D Mark IV as well, too. Um, I have a good connection in both situations there, so I see um, a better performance. But I would assume that modern cameras probably, like the EOS R, would probably be much better for live streaming and setting setting it up. So I also wanted to mention a bit of troubleshooting. I noticed that there were a couple of people who were leaving comments on other producers, YouTube people who, who actually spoke about setting this up and which is awesome you know setting it up is pretty easy i'm not going to go through it you could find other videos that show you how to set it up but when they set it up and they go through the instructions and they start the software it's still not working for them i'm going to explain to you why it's not working and which is important and i want you to pay attention um i'm going to navigate on this screen this is where i downloaded it the 5d mark IV. um here's the webcam utility and then when I select this, it has supporting docs, driver and software installs and everything like that. Um, now, when you go to download install, if you look at these instructions, let me see if it was here. Da, 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 da. Save. No, maybe it's under software details. Let me scroll down a little bit. I apologize, but I, I read it and I was like, oh, this is important. Um, environments, caution. Okay, in this caution set, section, when using the EOS webcam utility beta software with your camera, the video source image will not be visible if the EOS utility application is running as a background on your computer. So this is something that you need to pay attention to. And a lot of people might not have realized this, but when you start the soft, when you restart your computer and then you expect it to work, if you have the EOS utility app already running by default with my computer, it just starts when I restart my computer. Um, but it could be running in the background as well. So definitely check your tray at the bottom of your computer to see if it shows up, turn it off or quit the application first then use the software. And the software itself, when using the utility, it's separate. It's kind of like, it doesn't work on its own. It works when you start a software that's meant to use the camera, such as a, like a conference calling application like Zoom, or like this, like OBS, um, like OBS Studio, like what I'm using now. It'll show up as like a camera that you can select. But it's not an application that you could just select and put all your settings to. So that is important to keep note of as well. It's its its own thing. And one of the things that they recommend here that I'm actually wanted to point out, that when using the M50, for some reason, and I haven't tested it out, I've got the M50 and I'll probably test it out. Um, they want you to make sure that the M50 screen is facing you to achieve optimal performance. Why that is, I have no idea, but that's what they request from you. So basically that's it. That's what I wanted to share. Um, to install the application, just do the regular install or look at another YouTube video if you wanted, but I wanted to share these quick tips and the fact that it does, if not a bit jittery, work on other cameras. So I would definitely consider trying, if you have a Canon camera that's not on the list, give it a shot. And if you if you're like okay, but each each um, camera has its own uh, utility installation, I would almost experiment downloading it off of a camera that most closely resembles your camera, because I downloaded the 5D Mark IV version, and it I'm running the same one to work off my 6D, and it though jittery still works. So. Give it a shot. But that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you for joining. Thank you for the comments. If you see this video later, definitely leave your comments. I've left a link to the actual download of this software in below in the description. 
And as always, thank you for joining me. It means a lot that you watch these videos. And of course, like, share, and if you haven't already, you definitely, especially today, make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later, and uh, I'll probably have a few more streams in the future. Goodbye.